everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are going to do a couple things. Uh, right now, I'm going to um, add my tape to my hinges, so I'm going to put double-sided tape on both sides of my hinges, and then we're going to quickly make, um, together make one of the pocket pages that fit on top of the hinge, and then we're going to start actually decorating um, the explosion part of the box here. So I'm doing a, kind of a combination. So in the previous videos, we built up the base. I didn't build the um, pockets that are gonna go on top. So we're gonna do that real quick. So let's go ahead and quickly add some tape here. And again, we're adding tape to both sides of the hinge. It's gonna hold our pocket page in place. This is the second one. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these offline. You guys get the gist. So we're just going to continue this uh, process all the way to the last hinge, which is 12. And then our pocket pages are going to slip right over. So now I'm going to set this aside. And for the pocket page, you're going to need <sighs> two you join two of these to make the pocket page. The measurements are six and three quarter by six and a quarter. Six and three quarter by six and a quarter. You're gonna score at the half inch edge. So you're gonna have a finished six and a quarter by six and a quarter, okay? And I chose this size because I want my insert to be six by six. Um, so that was kind of the thought process behind this. But having, having designed it and started to put it together now, I realize that that means that these pieces, the external pockets, I can't get four panels out of a 12 by 12. So if I had made this smaller, I could get four panels out of it. But you make the pocket smaller, then you got to make the insert smaller. So it's kind of a cascading issue. Um, but I think if I was to do it again, I might have made it a little bit smaller to get better um, utilization out of my 12 by 12 pack. And I'm still um, designing the pages, so I don't know yet how much paper I'm going to use. But um, by the time I start, by the time the video is released, inside the description, if you click the show more, there will be a material list. Okay, so there is our twelve by or six and a quarter by six and a quarter pocket. And again, you start with a six and three quarter by six and a quarter score half inch on the six and three quarter side to make your pocket. So you'll need a total of 24 of these panels joined together to make 12 pocket pages. And that will fit right on top of, uh, of these hinges and cascade for you, okay? So that's how it's gonna look. So I'm gonna set this aside. We've got that done. Actually, I'm not gonna set aside. I'm gonna turn it over because we're gonna start decorating it. So here I'm going to use um, the the balloon image. Um, there's a quite a bit of blue in this um, collection, so it's it's pretty easy to make a boy album. Um, but I wanted to make uh, the outside look kind of universal, so it could go either way. So I chose the balloons. It's not too feminine, not too masculine. Um, so we're gonna put that on each of these uh, panels. So I'm gonna turn it over. And we have to remember to put them right side up. Now, I didn't have um, enough to go all the way up and still cover all four of these. So the way I'm going to work around that is I cut a strip off a different page with the alphabet. So that's going to be the header for each one of these. And then the balloons will be the body, like so. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, as I usually do, is I'm going to put down the strip. I think I'm going to do, ah, uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to show um, a white band be between the two images, between the two prints, or if I want them to be butted up against each other, like so. And I've been going back and forth about that uh, for a little while. 
<laughs> so that's one look. The other look would be there'd be that a white line between the two prints, which I like. That's always sort of my go-to look. I'm not sure. I do think if we butt them up to each other, then there's gonna be less likelihood of the lid going off and on and catching the paper. So I think that's what I'm gonna go with, not to put a gap between the two, um, just because it's it's right where the lid meets um, the paper. And I think if we had a gap, it would be just more of a risk of catching. So I'm gonna go ahead and join all of these pieces together and then dry fit them and trim as necessary. And what I mean by join is I'm going to put some tape on the backside and join these two. And then I'm going to lay it back down and trim it to fit. So it's gonna go just like so. And I, you know, normally I use double-sided tape, but you don't need to. I'm just gonna use some scotch tape um, because we're gonna glue the whole panel down anyway. I think each one of the um, strips is a little bit wider than the panel, so we are going to have to do some trimming. So I'm going to, oh, almost did it backwards. It's almost perfect where I wouldn't have to cut into the letters, but you're gonna have to cut in a little bit. So I'm trying to, to center it so that I'm gonna take a little sliver off both sides. So there we go. So now we have this universal piece. I'll trim off those two little tabs that are sticking out, and then I'm gonna check the height, uh, and then we'll glue it in. But for now, we're just gonna do the joints. This came from the 12 by 12 um, pack that has eight patterns in it. Uh, Chow Bella does their collections a little different than everybody else. So they have a 12 by 12 collection pack A and B or one and two. And those have 12 sheets. And then, is that right? 12 sheets? I say that and I'm not sure. Maybe 10 sheets. Then they have the eight sheet pack. And then they have an A4 pack. And then in addition to all of that, they have six by six. And I'm actually using one of each of those. Planning to use one of each of those. I'll let you know as I get, that's way too far over. I'll let you know exactly what I used in the description at the end. There we go, it's a little tedious. Okay, so we're gonna do that two more times. I don't think you guys need to sit through that. And then I'm gonna dry fit them, trim them, and we'll glue them down. I'll be right back. Okay, I dry fit and trimmed these out. So we're ready to go ahead and do the install. Now keep in mind um, the orientation of the explosion box and your papers. Make sure you're not putting them in upside down. <clears throat> wipe and I didn't have one handy. Okay, I'm going to turn it on its side and we're going to install the designer papers. I am doing a 16th inch border, which means each one of these panels is an eighth of an inch shorter and narrower than where I'm applying it. Oops. Okay, 
just going to repeat that process three more times. I love balloons. I think they're so pretty. <clears throat> okay, I'm actually arranging these so that the letters actually work. <laughs> Let's see, do they? J, K, L, M, N, O, P. W. Yeah, this is how they would go. I don't know if it's that important to you guys, but um, I'm just making them go in the order that they would appear in the alphabet. You may have noticed, for those of you that watch the channel frequently, um, I am not inking my edges. Um, this paper does have a white core, and I'm okay with that because it's getting laid down on a white cardstock. Um, I only care about knocking the white core off if it's going to create some level of contrast between the panel and uh, the cardstock that it's going down on. So in this case, I think it's perfectly fine. Okay, so there we go. We've got uh, the first part of the box decorated. Now we're going to work on the lid. And I'm doing some, something very simple on the lid because I plan to embellish it. One of the great things about having a lid is it's going to be removable, which means we can add lots of dimension here and not have to worry about how the box operates um, or how the, how the album uh, is going to lay. So that's kind of a nice feature. So this is just a simple gingham pattern. And then I'm gonna add some layers to make it pretty interesting. Okay, and I chose these stripes to go on the side. I need a burnish. Sorry, I can see it's not all the way down. I'm afraid to push on the box. It's actually quite sturdy, but it's still, I just don't have a lot of confidence. I don't want to collapse my box. Okay, these are just going to go all the way around on each of the four sides. Now, I'm putting it in together in this uh, order specifically because the outside of the box is the largest part to cover. So we want to make sure we don't have to color block if we don't want to. It's always an option. Um, and since I haven't cut into the paper packs really, almost everything is still its full size. So I have lots of choices in terms of covering the box. If you do the pages first, then you're left with scraps and trying to figure out how to put them together to cover the, the larger spaces, which again, are gonna be the outside and the inside of the box.
Boxen. There we go, there's our cover. Okay, I'm gonna put this together, take a break, trim out our inside liners, and then, sorry, I'm pushing this into place. I wanna make sure when I slip the lid on, it doesn't want to pull any of the paper with it. Okay, there we go. So that's how our box is going to look. And it's pushed in a little here, but when, when it's full with the pages, that shouldn't happen. Um, so, and I think if I wasn't pulling it in so hard when I, when I closed the box, it wouldn't be in like that either. But uh, I wouldn't be concerned. Yeah, see, it's gonna come out. So there is uh, the beginning of our box. Okay, when we get back together, we will line the inside of the box. Good morning, everybody. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create. I hope everybody's having a great day. I woke up in an excellent mood today. And uh, it's very sunny and warm here in San Diego. So it's going to be a beautiful day. Um, I'm going to start working on the lid of this. Nothing's glued down yet. I just wanted to give you, uh, you guys an idea of where we're headed. And um, I'm pretty happy with how things are turning out. So I want to point out that the roses that I'm using here are the Graphic 45 Precious Pink Roses. And I think they go beautifully with this collection. And it's it never looks exactly in the video like it does in person. But I'm telling you, it's perfect for this collection. If you go with the colors that I did on the on the lid. Of course, if you you use some different papers, you might be able to introduce a different color. But these are called Precious Pink, but they really, to me... Um, don't look pink. Um, I would say it's closer to a salmon. So it's, it's, it's hard. Well, I'll show you in contrast. So here's some Prima pink flowers. So you can see there's a big difference, right? Anyways, I, the, um, collection has, um, blue, green, and instead of pink, it's this sort of peach color. So I do think that these go excellent. Um, and I've got, you can see I fussy cut some things out. Um, oftentimes when I'm working on embellishing, you know, either the cover, or in this case, the lid, I, I fuss around with it a lot before I come up with what I want to do. And then uh, after I have it laid out the way I think I want it, I typically take a couple of pictures of it because when I disassemble it to start gluing things down, I sometimes forget what I did. So that's uh, just some heads up and I just noticed I hadn't plugged my camera in. So I'm gonna do that because I don't want to lose power partway through. So I'm gonna start to disassemble this and glue my pieces down. And as I go, I'll, I'll point out um, what's going on. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm using flowers, um, just to ease with the completed project is I'll cluster these ahead of time. So that's just a piece of white cardstock on the back. I've clustered it and then it allows me to move it around and test my location very easily. And I did the same thing here. I didn't glue in my two little tags, but I basically did the same thing. I, I kind of arranged it the way I wanted it, glued it down, flipped it over and then trimmed off any of the white that was showing uh, once I laid it back down. Okay, and then these are just two little cut-aparts. I made a little uh, banner here, and um, this is, I'm pretty sure, from the A4 pack. And I've got, yeah, um, yeah. So the A4 pack comes with a whole bunch of these cute little words that you can feature throughout the collection. So I took um, Little Angel and then Precious. Um, I wanted to, you know, keep it around the baby theme. Um, Bundle of Joy would have been another good one to um, add to the cover. And then I fussy cut this from, 
the A4, and then this is just out of one of my scrap pieces of paper. Um, I liked the balloons, but it needed a little something, so I'm going to add this other balloon behind it. And then these are just two panels, and I'll tell you the size, and I've put chipboard behind both of them. Okay, so the first one, the um, the white cardstock is five and one eight by five and one eight. So this piece is five by five, the designer piece. And then the the polka dot that I layered on top of it is four and five eighths by four and five eighths. Okay, and um, the let's double check that four and five eighths by four and five eighths. Yeah. Yeah, and so then this is four, four and a half by four and a half, the designer paper. And then I want these sort of at an angle. So I'm ready to start gluing things down. <clears throat> and I already forgot how this looked. So it's amazing how quickly that, that happens. I can't remember which way I had it. So I'm gonna actually take a break and look at my photo. Okay, sorry about that. So this is the way I had it, so that's terrible, I know. But you guys, I'm sure you all do the same thing. It's just amazing how quickly you can forget how something looks. Especially when you're blabbing away like me. Sorry, I'm so talkative this morning. I need to get my mind on my matters, as my dad used to say. there's nothing magic I just did what visually looked pleasing to me I didn't want to make it perfectly offset you know where these are all at 90 degrees I wanted it to be a little bit interesting and a little unpredictable and it's okay if it goes over the side a little bit because this lid is going to come off in its entirety um, to reveal the explosion uh, album underneath so you can embellish this as much as you want because you don't have to worry about trying to open your book and having it laying on top of all your embellishments and sort of holding the the cover up. That's one of the nice things about doing a box is you really can decorate it and remove it and set it aside when you're enjoying the album and then put it back on. And it really looks, to me, when I look at it, um, it makes me think of a cake. <laughs> <laughs> like a cake topper <laughs> so okay there we go so you can see it's not perfect and it's meant to be that way but if that um, drives you kind of crazy if you're a you know a right angle kind of person that I'm sure would look good as well okay so the next cup next things I want to do um, I think are get the roses located and I'm liking that, so I think I'm ready. And that's not glued in yet. <clears throat> and just to show you a close-up, this is um, three roses here and then a couple of the buds on this side, and then the stem. It's all tucked together. You'll notice when you try to put down the two larger roses, if you don't try to put a bud on either side, it, it has a bit of a gap. So that's one of the reasons I, I uh, cluster it like I do. Okay, and this is mostly sitting on top of the polka dot paper because there's chipboard under both pieces. It's staggered. Um, so you'll wanna uh, be careful that you don't set it on the edge of your chipboard. It, it might wanna tilt off. Okay. Let's see. Okay, and then I've taken apart um, the second stem and I'm just gonna tuck pieces here and there just to fill it out a little. Actually, got more glue on me than on the, <laughs> on the leaf. I want them to kind of go out from each other, so. There we go. And just little details like this um, really help fill it out. 
<clears throat> I'm going to go back and check those in a few minutes and make sure they actually are sticking down. Because they're, they've got a curve to them, there's want to make sure there's enough contact that it's going to stick. I'm just using the edge of this to push down the stem. Okay, now I think we're ready to start looking at where to tuck these little things in. And I'm going to fuss around with this a little bit until I get it the way I want it. <clears throat> these are um, fussy cut and then backed with white cardstock so they're a bit rigid so you can bend and shape them and they'll hold their shape and that just gives you even more dimension um, so I'm, my plan is to just glue down the one edge and again because you're going to lift this off and set it aside you really don't have to worry so much about um, these elements getting caught or snagged on anything like you would with a cover and then the last thing I'm gonna put in here you can see there it's crying for something I'm gonna tuck this little guy in here just like so isn't that cute <laughs> I think he's really cute now there's other things that you could fussy cut um, and to get a different look there is You know, you could use the giraffe, this guy. Look at this cute little bunny. And this duck was the other thing that I considered. But just a little something here would go a long way, you know, to help filling out that space. Okay, so I think that's about where I want him. So this is just fussy cut. I didn't back it with cardstock and I left a small blue border around it. And then we want to tuck this other balloon right here just to fill it out a little bit more. I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to fuss until I get it the way I think it looks best. I think I like that. Okay. So that I had originally planned the balloon on the other side. So messing around with it, you always come up with your final design. I don't want the basket to show. So I'm trying to tuck that behind, behind my um, koala here. And my glue dried out a little bit. So I'm gonna reapply it. Okay, and so that's going a long way to sort of pulling your eyes back toward the center and not having a bald space in the middle. Okay, I'm happy with these placements. So I'm gonna go ahead and Get a little glue behind both of these. And then once they're firmly in place, I'm probably gonna tweak the edges just a little bit more um, until I get them the way I like them. There we go. So, what do you guys think? I'm liking it. <laughs> I think it's really pretty. So I may add a little bit more, but I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way it looks, but I'm done for now. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. I just wanted to share that with you. So one of the things I wanted to get this down, um, but one of the things I haven't done, which I would recommend you do before you do the top is line the inside of your lid. So I haven't done that. I still need to do it. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that picked out and trimmed out and then get that laid in um, quickly. And that'll be the end of this video. And um, that'll get you a long way toward decorating the uh, inside outside of the box. So hang tight. I'll be right back.